Good evening. We welcome you to join us in our 33-day consecration to Eucharistic glory with Father Jesse Mango. Let us pause for a moment as we prepare our hearts for today's consecration journey. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Brothers and sisters, we're day 31 now, the way of virtue, that's our theme for the day. And you know, brothers and sisters, many of us have these books at home and you know, pass them along to people who have not been on the journey. In the book, it, 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 they suggest times where you could begin the consecration and when you could end the 33 day journey and whatever other feasts. For us, we are gearing towards the 30th of May, which is the Feast of Corpus Christi. But, you know, invite people onto the journey or you may want to make this journey again yourself because when you go into it, it might be deeper. But let us not waste these books or keep them lying around. Let us pass them along so that what began these 33 days, these 33 days may be a movement that will continue, that will grow, that will be like the leaven in our society that will transform our society. Because every book you pass on to somebody could be a changed soul and could be a changed home. It could be a changed workplace. It could be just the effect. There's no end. The ripples go on and on and on. And, you know, to yesterday we were speaking about holy moments and how when we, we have an option every moment of life to choose goodness or evil. And I spoke about how important it is, this teaching of the church based on scripture, really based from St. Paul and many of the saints and mystics over the, the, the life of the church. that says that to receive holy communion, we must prepare for holy communion. We must be in the right state of grace. We must have been to confession. You know, if we're aware of those grave sins, you know, if we have broken the commandments in a very grievous way, then on the path of Christ, all his teachings that he taught, then we go to this beautiful gift of sacrament, of, the, of confession, which is, which is a compendium to the Holy Eucharist. It's in the sacrament of confession where Jesus uses the main instrument of a priest to have that tactile contact with you and to, to absolve you of any grave sin, mortal sin, what we call mortal sin. And we get this language really from the scriptures from St. John. You know, he's the one who teaches us that there's a sin that, that destroys the life of God in us. And then there's another kind of sin that hinders it, but doesn't fully destroy God's life. But there's that sin that is deadly, that severs us off from God and severs us off from salvation. And so we have to pray for always the grace to die in a state of grace so that, that we could be saved, that we could be brought to the Lord. And as remember, we've said that the journey to heaven is a great spiritual journey. It's a great endeavor. But we have the Holy Eucharist, but we must approach the Holy Eucharist on the right terms. And therefore, it could become for us the true bread of immortality and life givingness. And uh, there's always a wisdom to God. Look, Adam and Eve took the fruit at the wrong time and in the wrong order. And rather than, than, than being the fruit of true knowledge and life, it, it they drank darkness, they ate darkness upon themselves. Same thing with the Holy Eucharist. If we, we take it in the wrong way, we could actually destroy even more our relationship with God. It, it, there's a great mystery around this. And Paul says you must discern the Eucharist that you will receive. So, brothers and sisters, we also spoke about, you know, what we do, our acts shape who we are. Today is the way of virtue. You know, if we choose good and we live good, we become good. We're not just in name or title, our being, our essence, our nature changes. If we choose to live the gospel, we will become gospelized. If we choose the way of sanctity and sanctification, we will become holy. We will, we will take on more of God's energy and life and we will 
be transformed in the interior of our life into the higher dimension of heaven. We will be, be finding what in the tradition calls divine union with God or growing in Christ, St. Paul says. So all these different ways of trying to, to say that, in fact, we can grow in the supernatural life of grace and God. And so this, this is the way of choosing good affects us. Our decisions reverberate back onto us and shape who we become. If we practice patience, the more and more it will, we will become more patient. So this is what he speaks about, Matthew Kelly speaks about today, about virtue. The virtue is a quote to catechism, that it's a firm disposition to do the good. So this is what we, we want to avoid vice, or what we call sin in the Christian tradition, or we wanna, and we want to choose virtue. We want to choose holiness. We want to choose those moral acts, those way of living that, that, that transforms us. And here, here's something, brothers and sisters, that I think we need to always hold in mind, that if I'm going to go and sit before Jesus in adoration, before the tabernacle, if I'm going to go to the Holy Mass, if I'm going to find the quiet places at home to pray, to light the candle, read the scriptures, and talk to God, and, and be aware of the saints and angels, and raise our consciousness to that, 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 that Christian consciousness that we're supposed to live with. If we're going to do all of that, the way we spend the rest of our lives outside of prayer time matter too. Our moral life is meant about, it's about holiness, about happiness. In fact, Christian morality is about happiness. It's about when we live in a certain way, it's about so that we could grow in happiness, so we could grow in joy, that we could grow in a taste of God. And so the moral life is not divorced from our prayer life. You can't just go and do meditation without trying to live a holy life. It's, it's not going to go anywhere. But trying to live a holy life means that when we come to meditation, we're bringing a holy heart, a pure heart. And in prayer, then we could see God more clearly by prayer. And this is what the ancient mothers and fathers of the church, they taught us about purity of heart, you know, based on that beatitude of Jesus. Blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. So the pure our heart is by living a moral life, by fasting, by, by doing acts of charity, all these things. You know, vigils of prayer, those days of long hours of longer hours of prayer, just focus on God. These things cleanse the human heart and therefore prepare us for that encounter with God, for the place for the Holy Spirit to reverberate and live in our hearts. And so, brothers and sisters, as Matthew Kelly says, you know, those five people you emulate, they're going to those five friends you keep around you, they're gonna shape who you are. So we need to choose wisely. We need to live with the saints. We need to live and choose our friends wisely so that they could lead us to God, they could lead us to heaven, to holiness. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
My Jesus, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. And I ask pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. My Jesus, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. And I ask pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. My Jesus, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. And I ask pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. Lord, I believe that you see me, that you hear me. Lord, I ask that your gaze may reach to everybody who is watching right now, Lord. Watching on the media, irrespective of where they are and what time they find themselves in that your gaze from your Eucharistic heart, Lord, may fall upon them, that they may feel with every fiber of their soul and being that you see them and that you know them. Lord Jesus, you are the healer. You heal our souls. Lord Jesus, may your divine love reach us and heal us wherever we are. Jesus, we carry so many problems and torments and trials. We feel crushed by some of the problems of our life and the world. Jesus, strengthen us. Help us to endure the cross like you endured the cross. Lord Jesus, we love you so much. Give us a burning love for you, Lord. In these moments now of silence, may we just feel your gaze upon us your divine eyes buried in the monstrance, your divine eyes looking at us from all the tabernacles of the world, your divine eyes always gazing upon us. Thank you, Jesus. Mother Mary, in this month of May, help us to love your Son here upon this altar with all our hearts. You and St. Joseph in Nazareth adored Jesus with great love and faith. Please help us, Mother Mary. May God use you to draw us closer to your Son. Help us to attend Holy Mass with great love and fervor. Help us to prepare worthily for Mass. Help us in our thanksgivings after Mass to linger, to waste time with your Son in Holy Communion. Jesus, we trust in you. Jesus, we trust in you. Jesus, we trust in you. Brothers and sisters, in a brief moment, we will begin our benediction. Open wide your hearts, as Pope John Paul would say. Open wide your hearts to Christ. Open wide your doors of your homes, your lives, to the blessing of God.
have given them bread from heaven, containing in itself all sweetness. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have given to us in this sacrament of your body and blood the ever-present sign of your passion. As we revere this wonderful mystery, so may we always share the new life restored to us by you. Our Redeemer, you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be Jesus in the most, in the poorest of the poor. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. May the heart of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament be praised, adored, and loved with grateful affection at every moment in all the tabernacles of the world, even to the end of time. Amen. i
Thank you for joining us this evening. We look forward to praying with you tomorrow.